Three people have already died from this illness, which has spread to at least three other eight. Laborers line up coffins along trenches in New York City's Heart Island. Governor Janet Mills has issued a new statewide mandate saying if you are in any public place, indoors or outdoors, you have to wear a mask. And the reason she's doing it is the spike in COVID-19 cases we have been seeing for more than a week now. We didn't know how it spread or how to do prevention. I remember everybody bringing their groceries over and wiping everything down with Clorox or ordering from Amazon and we had to leave the boxes outside for three days. Everything shut down. Um, literally everything, my daycare is in this building, every town building shut down, businesses for the most part shut down, and even during the summertime there was literally nothing for children or families to do. It was very quiet in the beginning here, uh, no kids on the playground, it seemed fairly eerie. The specific problem we were trying to address when the pandemic hit was how do we keep businesses open? We had so many island summer people who felt that they shouldn't come. And part of that was caused by people on the island who were worried that if all of a sudden people came from all over the country, they could bring COVID here. When it hit, we weren't sure what to do. We weren't sure what kind of uh, increase in demands we'd have. And uh, pretty quickly we saw it was going to be serious. One of the first things that we recognized early on was the need to gather everyone together. So we called a meeting in the town of Yarmouth to get people together to say, I think we should worry and I think we should prepare. And so I think that was the date of our first task force meeting and got about 50 people in the town hall and started making plans. I emailed the town manager and I'm like, is there something we can do to bring a smile back to the community and to the kids' faces? We needed to do something for the community, for the families, for the kids. Um, to get them out and try to build morale a little better around town. So we started calling elderly folks in, in Cape Elizabeth to see if they needed any anything as far as medication or uh, food. Began making phone calls to them just to make sure that they were okay, um, how they were doing, did they have support. We had so many people in this community step up, I mean in a huge way. Um, thousands and thousands of dollars had uh, came in every month uh, to support the, the pantry. We had people with skills that stepped up and said, hey, I'm going to fill out this grant for you and I think you're going to be able to get it. People came out of nowhere and just gave us so much money and so many items. And we actually bought enough KN95 masks to provide to every household on Shabiq. We divided the whole island up by tax maps we had seven teams of people. Within two hours, every household that had people living in it had a bag with KN95s in it, with um, information about how to wear a KN95 and why to wear it. Rapid serial testing is a good way that we could implement to help the school to test the kids every four days and you know, keep the positive cases at home and keep the healthy kids in school. So every Wednesday since uh, COVID started back last March, uh, we deliver food to families in the Cape Elizabeth area that um, could use some assistance. Uh, originally, we had upwards of 29 families that uh, needed assistance uh, getting the food delivered back when uh, everybody was quarantined. As the restrictions have been lifted, um, more families have been able to come to the school to get the food themselves. Uh, there's still a few families that whether they have children at home and they're a single parent or whether they uh, have pre-existing medical conditions that make them feel unsafe going out with COVID still going on, that we are providing um, the delivery service for. Hi, it's Officer Estes. I'm just calling to let you know I dropped the food off. All right, you're welcome. Have a great day. We got the police and fire involved, we made videos, uh, we kept translating information to folks all over town. We began doing wastewater testing to make sure that we could pick up anything that was going on and keep watching for that. We began testing people uh, for the virus. We probably have about 150 people around Yarmouth that are working on different projects. One of the signs of success is really that there are a whole separate activities that people have taken charge of. During the pandemic, we noticed that um, and became concerned about the isolation of seniors in our community. 
brainstormed ways to try to um, connect with them and keep them connected. Um, I had originally called a master gardener in town who um, I'm sure would have loved to help, but she's unfortunately having back surgery today. So went to plan B and thought, hey, I think Matt and I can do this and get it done. And it is a feel good thing, both of us. Happy to be here. She's a wonderful lady and really takes pride in her garden and we want to help her do that. We got this idea as it was starting to get a little colder outside to call it BYOB. Bring your own blanket. So we went out and bought a bunch of blankets and a bunch of hats and we gave them to the restaurants so they could give them to patrons to encourage them to keep coming back. But we had another problem. It's going to get really cold and the snow's going to fly. So how do we think about this not just locally? How do we think of this regionally and statewide? So we partnered with Greater Portland Council of Governments, the main office of tourism, Visit Portland and a number of other organizations to come up with this main winter time. We went out and visited a number of restaurants. We got them on camera. We asked them to be part of the support as we pushed it out in the community and to get people to continue to go, even though it's much colder outside. And they did, and it worked. Now it's morphed into a statewide program. If we can do it locally, we can do it regionally, and we can do it statewide. We did drive by Halloween where early in the week we put out packets for kids to pick up for activities and then Halloween night they came back drive through. They got their candies and stuff. They're very excited. Which we decided to try again at Christmas. I figured it'd be nice to give out Christmas stockings. We had them donated. We packed them with a bunch of goodies and we packed them with the golden ticket. You'd be standing out there in the cold, freezing to death, but when you handed a stocking to that child and you saw the big grin or they won, they got, they got the gold ticket and they were going to be able to go get a book from the library and get their tin of popcorn, and we were hollering, hey, winner, 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 you know? So we were just as excited as the kids were. We did a program with the Sebago Lake Anglers of ice fishing, and I'm looking at this man, and I said, are you from Connecticut? Yes, I am. Weren't you at the Christmas? I was. He goes, we've been spending more time up here because in our town, they're not really doing anything. And the award shocked us all. I still can't get over it, quite frankly. It was a wonderful thing to be recognized when you didn't expect to be. You know, we didn't do it for the, for the kudos, as the paper said, we did it for the kiddos. We have had one family in particular uh, from New Gloucester that each time they've had a stimulus check, uh, they've given us money. Last Friday, they gave me $200. And I was like speechless when they gave it to me. I, I, Linda and I pulled Linda over and I said, hey, look at this, this is amazing, but we can't take it, it's way too much money. They absolutely refused and said, absolutely not. You guys are here for us all the time. We got our bills paid off, we have this extra money, and we want it to go back to helping people of this food pantry. I have been overwhelmed at the way that communities have rallied to support and protect and educate their communities. We brought out the best in everyone. Our residents, our business owners, our elected officials, everyone rallied together and we saw how resilient we could be as a community. Yeah, it's really made us have to think outside the box of what we can do to serve. Volunteering is just, if you can do it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel real good. <laughs>